Welcome to E3 Rehab. I'm Dr. Mark Sertica, physical therapist. Today, I'm gonna to do my very first training vlog. Hopefully it turns out okay. And then I'm gonna answer some questions from Instagram. If you're new to the channel, this is the fifth video that I'm making on the topic. So I had a right total hip replacement about 11 and a half years ago. And in the previous videos, I've discussed my experience, general exercise progressions, kind of how I structure my training, and I've done a Q&A. But in this video, I wanna show you that you can still train hard, be strong, be healthy, even with a joint replacement. So let's get into the training. All right, so let's start with the warm up. It is pretty cold in here, so I'm gonna start with about five minutes on the Echo Bike. Just gonna get my temperature going uh, and get me prepared for training. All right, so done with the Echo Bike. Now I'm gonna jump into kind of a generalized, non-specific warm-up to take my hips through various ranges of motion because it can feel good for me prior to jumping into the workout. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the world's greatest stretch. It's gonna work on hip extension, hip flexion, and get a little bit of thoracic rotation going. So let's show it. All right, next exercise, I'm gonna do an inchworm. It's just a nice way to get the hamstrings, calves, kind of warmed up as well. All right, last one are these quadruped toe taps. It's just a nice way to get my hips through a large range of motion. Once again, it just feels good for me. All right, so for those previous exercises, you can set a timer and do one to two minutes per exercise. You know, you can do a certain amount of sets and reps. Generally, that shouldn't take you much longer than about five minutes. The next thing I'm gonna do today, just because I do have some extra time, are some banded side steps. So I had a posterior approach for my surgery. And so I do have a little bit of atrophy and weakness on the side with reference to my glutes compared to my opposite side. So sometimes I throw in some kind of isolated uh, glute work to try to work on those deficits side to side. So I'll take my band and uh, just get into some side steps. All right, so that whole warm up took me, you know, 10, 15 minutes. You really shouldn't have to spend much more time than that. As you can see, I like to get my kind of heart rate, core temperature up, right? Starting with that echo bike. Then I like to move into a dynamic warm up. And if there's time, which I do have more time today, doing something like the banded side steps. Now, if I'm short on time, you know, I'm rushed, I don't always do a warm up. I'll just go right into my, you know, exercises and kind of my warm up sets on those exercises are my warm up. But I've just noticed that when I take the time to do a warm up, my hips feel a little bit stiff. Sometimes when I'm maybe lacking sleep, my hip feels a little bit more stiff um, and I can just feel nice to do a dedicated warm up like this. All right, so we're gonna start with my favorite leg exercise, the rear foot elevated split squat. I'm gonna do it with a barbell but you can do it with body weight, with dumbbells, with kettlebells. You can do it with both feet flat on the floor. So I really like it because it is very modifiable, but it's a compound exercise, trains your quads, trunk, glutes, adductors, a lot of muscle groups. I'm gonna do a couple warm-up sets, work up to some heavy sets of eight to 12 reps and see what I get. So let's get into it. All right, I haven't used the barbell in a while, so that was actually pretty challenging. Did four sets of eight at 155 pounds. Rest times, just kind of catching my breath in between sets, no specific rest time. So for the next exercise, I'm gonna do a single leg RDL. Just wanna reiterate, you can use a dumbbell, a barbell, a kettlebell, body weight, do what's comfortable for you. Uh, this next movement's compound movement, but rather than focusing on the quads, it's gonna focus a little bit more on the hamstrings, but once again, Kind of hit those adductors and glutes so let's do it all right just finished that four sets eight repetitions and for compound movements i usually stick to eight repetitions or higher that just is what feels the best for my hip like my hip doesn't feel too great if i'm doing you know significantly higher weight at a lower rep range like five reps so I usually stick around eight or higher. 
um, and it, it matches my goals. So for the next two exercises, I'm going to do Nordics and reverse Nordics. And where the rear foot elevated split squat and the single leg RDL are these compound movements, multiple muscle groups, these next exercises are a little bit more isolated. So I'm focusing on hamstrings a little bit more and focusing on uh, quads a little bit more. You know, if you didn't want to do these or you have access to a gym, other options for the hamstring would be prone hamstring curl, seated hamstring curl, hamstring curl with sliders, hamstring curl with a ball. You know, there's more options you can choose uh, for the quads. You know, you could do this. You could do a sissy squat. You could do a leg extension or, you know, you could do some other variation. So um, let's get into those. All right, so I just did a super set. So you do one exercise, then the other exercise, four sets of eight repetitions. Once again, kind of focusing a little bit more isolated on these certain muscle groups, really working on their kind of lengthening uh, contraction as we're doing that. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about programming and whether or not these are necessary for everyone. You know, I would say that those compound movements are gonna get more bang for your buck, but we can talk about, um, you know, how necessary some of these other accessory movements actually are. And then for the last exercise, I'm just going to do some calf raises. I think calves are kind of uh, often undertrained, overlooked, but they're really important if you want to run, play sports, jump, do anything like that. So let's do these calf raises. All right, so finished up those single leg calf raises or heel raises, kettlebell on the same side. Last thing I'm gonna finish up with, don't always do it. Once again, have a little bit of extra time today um, is a little bit of a circuit between the echo bike and some med ball slam. So I'm gonna spend about five to 10 minutes doing that. And I'm gonna give a recap of the entire day and just my programming in general and answer some questions. All right, so let's do a quick recap for today. So I did a warm up, started with the echo bike for five minutes, kind of get my temperature up, heart rate up. Then I went into a dynamic generalized warm up to get my hips moving. And then I did some banded side steps just to address kind of that atrophy and strength difference side to side. For my first exercise, I did the rear foot elevated split squat with a barbell, four sets, eight repetitions, 155 pounds. Then I did a single leg RDL with the landmine attachment, four sets of eight at 80 pounds, and then supersetted the Nordic hamstring curl and that reverse Nordic, four sets of eight each. Single leg heel raises, four sets of 10 uh, at 55 pounds, that's holding a kettlebell in one hand. And then I ended with three sets, so 20 seconds on the echo bike, pretty much as fast as I could go. And then, um, you know, six pound med ball, not very heavy, but trying to throw it hard into the wall. Now, considering this, right, you might look at this and go, wow, that's a lot of volume. Now, the purpose of today's video isn't to tell you how to work out, right? This is actually specific to me. And the goal of this video is to show you that you can still train hard, you know, heavy and be fit and active and healthy with a total hip replacement or, you know, another joint replacement. So that's kind of the purpose of this. So this is something that I've built up to over a long period of time. And I wouldn't expect you to necessarily do the same thing or have the same goals as me. So what I aim for is I usually try to do some kind of leg workout twice a week. Right? And that's, that's kind of the frequency and intensity. You know, I keep it relatively high. Some days maybe a little bit harder, some days a little bit easier. But once again, you know, that's, that's relative to me. 
And if you're thinking about, well, how can I implement something like this into you know, my routine? You know, what, what would I do? And it depends. You know, if you're two months out from the joint replacement, three months out, this is probably not something that you're going to be doing. And so that time frame is going to matter. Your training history is going to matter. Like, what have you done in the past? What are your goals? And then also understanding that some of these exercises might not be necessary or might not be realistic. Like the reverse Nordic, that might not be something that you need to do, want to do, is realistic for you. So I wouldn't stress about it. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the rear foot elevated split squat, the single leg Romanian deadlift, those are big bang for your buck movements. And if you were just to do those twice a week, relatively challenging for you, three to five sets, um, you know, that's, that's going to do a lot. That's going to challenge your entire lower body, your trunk, um, you know, so don't stress about trying to replicate what I do. This is what I like to do. This is what I've found works for me. And in terms of the echo bike and med ball, that's not something that I do very often, actually. So for my cardio respiratory fitness, my uh, main form of that is just walking my dogs for 30 to 60 minutes every day. And then maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks, going on a hike with my dogs uh, and my wife. And then maybe occasionally biking, getting on an echo bike. But that kind of training is not something that I do very often. And once again, you know, I don't really like to do um, plyometrics or running or sprinting or things like that. So I've found what works for me. But, you know, you might have to find what works for you. And once again, just kind of showing you that you can train hard, you can be healthy, and you might have to tailor things a bit, but you know, it doesn't necessarily have to stop you from doing the things that, that you want to do. So hopefully, you know, this gives you some insight into what I'm able to do and what a lot of people probably can do. And um, now I'll go into answering some, some questions, like I said, that I got from Instagram. All right, so let's get into this Q&A. So for the first question is, do you still have pain that stops you? And I would say, no, I actually don't have any pain that stops me from doing activities. I can lift, I can hike, I can snowboard, I can do all of the activities that I want to do. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm pain free with all activities. So I found a level of discomfort that I'm comfortable with during lifting or other exercises and I kind of stay within that range and, and that's tolerable for me and that's okay with me. That's going to vary person to person and it took me a long time to figure that out. But once again, no, I don't have any pain that's necessarily stopping me from doing anything. All right, so for the second question, what ranges of motion do you feel deficits in stability or confidence? And I would say that I don't have any deficits in stability or confidence. I'm, I'm comfortable moving you know, weights or moving my hips through different ranges of motion. I know my limit. I know my tolerance. Now, I'm very limited in a lot of ranges of motion, especially internal and external rotation, but I'm confident moving into those positions. Third question, are you following an individualized macro, micro training cycles of periodization? Right now, yes, I am. I'm very strict with the workouts that I'm doing. But I would say for the most part over the past several years, I haven't been as strict. I'll write a program for myself for you know, maybe three months and I'll do like a double progression method where I'll try to progress reps and wait. And I don't like too much variability in my program. So I keep similar exercise selections. And then after you know every few months, if I plateau, I'll change the exercise selection, maybe change the rep ranges, just change it up just a little bit. Uh, not too much. I like to do, like I said, similar exercises for a long period of time. In terms of deloads, it's usually just unplanned life deloads. Maybe I go on vacation with my wife. Maybe it's a holiday, uh, things like that. So that's how I generally program for myself. I don't have any specific, you know, bodybuilding goals, you know, sporting goals. It's just I'm trying to be uh, healthy, active, you know, get a little bit stronger, gain a little bit of muscle and, and function well for the activities that I want to do for a long period of time. All right, so last question, is squatting out of the question for somebody with a hip revision? And I would say not necessarily, if you think about sitting down into the toilet, sitting down into a chair or a couch, dining room table, 
you know, every time you're sitting down, essentially you're doing some variation of a squat. Now, if you've had a hip revision, it's going to depend on why you had that hip revision, how long it's been since that hip revision. Obviously, my recommendation is going to be to discuss that with your surgeon or physical therapist. You know, for the most part, most people with, you know, a hip replacement, even a revision, can be physically active in some capacity. And it might be just trying to figure out how to tailor exercises to fit your needs. So if you're unsure, definitely, you know, speak to your surgeon and or physical therapist to make sure that you can get on an exercise routine that's sustainable and works for you. All right, so that's it for the Q&A. No, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave any questions or comments down below. You know, make sure to watch the other four videos. If there are other questions that weren't answered in this video and you haven't seen those, I answer a lot and go into a lot of detail. There's also a blog on our website, e3rehab.com, that's close to 10,000 words. And that has a lot of information that's actually not included in any of these videos. It's, it's different information. And, you know, like I said, this is the fifth video that I've done on, on the topic. I'm not sure what I'll do next. Maybe I'll just do another training vlog. But if there's anything that you want me to make specifically related to total hip replacements, you know, let me know. And if it's doable, I'll make a video on it. Thanks for watching. Peace.